So, Christina, what was your, what was the state that you were in when you, uh, when you came to the therapy program of ECT? Bad state, very bad state. I was sick, and worst of all, I didn't care. On one hand, I wanted to feel better, but underneath it all, I just had a really negative attitude that said, I don't really care. I had her card for months before I ever called her. I looked at the card, I saw the different points that were listed, and the person that gave me the card told me that this person would be able to help me stop smoking. When I say bad state, it's because I had been taking antibiotics for a serious lung infection. And sometimes I would force myself to not smoke for a week, but that's about the longest I'd go. And then I would just say, oh, well, so what? I don't care. If I die, good. So I consider that a very bad state. And so what happened when you, uh, when, well, how, did, how was it that you came to the, the therapy? How did you find out about the therapy? I found out about it because um, uh, where I was living, there was a cul-de-sac, and I was trying to make my lungs better, so I was into running whatever little way I could. And I was out running one afternoon, and I uh, met this person who was also running. Uh, this lady told me about... ECT, and she gave me her car. That's how I came to know about it. And she told me she had been going to her for therapy, and that she just really raved about how much she had helped her with. Um, I forget exactly what it was her problem was, but she just couldn't say enough wonderful things about it. And so I said, "Well, okay, fine, give me her car." Mm -hmm. But like I said, I didn't call. I somehow had a feeling that this person was going to have an effect on my life and be able to help me, but. It's almost like I didn't want to help myself. So I, I, did, I literally didn't call for maybe two, three months. I guess I finally made the call just because some part of me somewhere was desperate. When I first went to her, I was, I guess, pretty defensive. I remember saying to her, look, I don't want to make you feel bad as a therapist. I see here what your card says, but... Um, I want you to know that I, I like smoking. I'd like to feel better, but I, I don't really think I can quit smoking, and I just I don't want you to feel bad as a therapist. And she didn't really laugh at me, but I think she was probably amused. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, how was uh, your situation? Uh, how was it the, the things that were uh, were a problem for you? How was it affecting your life before you came to the therapy? I just was searching for some kind of peace of mind. I didn't even understand really what that meant or really what I was looking for. All I knew is that I was very confused and very drained by life. I didn't have any real goals as far as buying real estate and making a lot of money or really making it in a career. I just had a, a, a sense of putting myself down and just feeling like I wasn't worthwhile, although I had been very fortunate and had a lot of very good jobs and people that might hear me saying this would be very surprised to even know that I felt like that. I was pretty normal. I mean, I had my wine cocktail and my cigarettes along with everybody else. But underneath, there was something inside of me that was just aware that I was really pained that I was sick and that I was really fed up and that I just didn't even care if I died. I had that attitude. I didn't care if I died. And so what happened uh, when you came to the therapy? How did that change? The first thing that happened that I really remember happening is I learned, I learned that breathing controls the mind. I learned that the breath is very essential and very important. Yusuti didn't immediately say, okay, you're going to stop smoking at all. I, it's been a few years, so I forget exactly the immediate dialogue, but it was, let's understand what's behind the smoking, and would explain to me um, a process of dealing with the problem on a subconscious level in order to alleviate the problem, not just to get rid of the symptom. And I was very willing to do this because in a way, in a way, when I felt a person being truthful and sincere with me, 
I also responded to that and I felt I trusted this person and I felt I let a lot of my guard down and I was willing to open up, which is something I, I rarely did with anybody in my life. And so the problem of the smoking wasn't directly attacked. The problem of why I was sick, why I had this this virus, I mean, what the doctor said was a big black mass in my lungs, why I had this in my system. And it, it really got down to understanding why I hated myself. And I didn't even really know that I hated myself. But what I really came to understand is that I really hated myself. I hated everything that I stood for. I hated everything that I was supposed to be in life. And I had such such low regard and such resentment for my life that I literally was killing myself. So I, I feel that by first of all understanding the importance of breathing and having some control, it, that was the, the, the stage where it, it was like a big light that went off in my brain just to imagine that the, the breathing could be so important to life. I sent the virus out of my body with Isati's help. Sent it away. Sent it away in the therapy by seeing it and by using the tools that were given in the therapy, following the guidance of the therapist. I was able to see this for what it is and to send light into this darkness. It was black and I sent light into it. And, and with the breath, I sent it away. It went, it was gone. And slowly, I just didn't feel like smoking as much. It's almost like the craving for the cigarettes was gone. It's not something I thought about every day. Well, I'm down to this many cigarettes or that many. I just would remember that I forgot to smoke <laughs> in the last few hours. And then it became less and less to the point where I, I just realized, I said, I'm really, I don't have this craving anymore. It just, like, went away. And has the problem ever reoccurred? The problem never, ever reoccurred. What did reoccur is me being in a state of mind that would be confused and almost out of an old habit, not because the problem reoccurred and the addiction was there, but because of an old habit, I would find myself sometime in a circumstance and just picking up and lighting them I don't even smoke anymore. What am I doing? And what I saw as the problem is this old habit. So it wasn't that the addiction was the problem. It was a, a habit of, of something that was old. One of the things that that old habit included would be smoking a cigarette. And so how has the change affected your, your life? I mean, it, how has it changed you inside? How has it changed you outside? The main, the main and the most beautiful, the most obvious change is that I don't hate myself. I feel life is beautiful and life is worth living and there's something important in life, that I'm important, that there is a reason for my life. And I still don't have any major goals as far as buying real estate or making it in the corporate world, but I don't consider those things essential to life. What I consider to be success and to be happiness isn't so much in gaining possessions, but it's a feeling of happiness, an accomplishment of a purpose that's worthwhile in life. By feeling better because of this hatred and this negativeness being sent away, which included totally being addicted to sugar and junk food. I started caring more for myself, so I didn't want to abuse myself in that way. I started taking better care of myself and feeling better, and feeling happy inside, so that I felt a sense of joy that could be shared with others in life. And do you feel that the process of the, of the therapy, the, the therapy, do you feel it's safe? Safe, I feel it's essential. You see, it's not so much getting rid of a negative habit or of smoking or of being a junk food or sugar addicted. What, what I see now is that a process of seeing the different parts of my personality as being there and all 
sometimes contradicting each other, but nevertheless, I see them as something that I, from a center, control. And this process of discovering my center and coming to, to feel and to know, not just to believe in something, but to really feel it and to really know that that's who I am, that I see all these separate little sections, almost like I'm the conductor of the orchestra. And, and I can choose to step into or step out of, but the most important thing is that I don't identify myself with being the fragmented personality. So it has given not only a sense of joy and, and wonder in life and, and a good feeling, but a sense of real life, a sense of feeling that by just being a piece of this or a piece of that or sometimes contradicting this or that, I didn't feel alive, I didn't, I didn't feel whole, I didn't feel complete. And yes, I feel that therapy is 100% safe. There's no reason to even think that it wouldn't be. I'm not sure why you asked the question as far as being safe, but I do realize that the, the patterns and the programs that I've had in my brain have been pretty hard, very thick-headed, stubborn person. And I think that to just read a book about it or try to understand or talk to a psychiatrist about it and just constantly talking on that mental level, I never ever would have been able to resolve, maybe in this lifetime or a thousand lifetimes, because I considered the problem to be enormous. And this therapy enabled the immediate resolve because I was dealing beneath the chit-chat of the conscious level of the mind. I feel it's essential to have a sense of trust with the therapist. And as I said from the very beginning, I did sense that this therapist, Nisati, is deserving of that trust. And so I felt the shell open up. I don't feel that if I, I would have been able to open up and have that part of myself exposed if I didn't sense that trust. And how has this affected your work life, the changes? It's given me a sense of confidence that I didn't have before, even though I have talents and I've continued to develop those talents in different areas, both in sales, marketing, and also in administrative work. Um, I feel that I just have more of a sense of, of accomplishment, of knowing that if I set out to do a job, that I do my very best job because I care about it. Whereas before, I would do it because I had to do it because it was my job and they were going to pay me, but I didn't really care for it. I just was doing it begrudgingly. Now I do it because I feel like doing my very best. And I get well paid and rewarded and, and in whatever way I'm, I'm, I'm doing it for. I highly recommend the therapy to anyone that would be so fortunate as to meet and have the opportunity to do this therapy.